Hi guys, welcome back to another embryology video. I think we are on number eight now, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about uh, somatogenesis in this video. The somites are super, super important. They're formed from segmentation of the paraxial mesoderm. Uh, we talked about last video about the lateral plate mesoderm and the intermediate mesoderm, but we really didn't talk much about the paraxial mesoderm and what happens to that. So that's where we're going super important we're going to basically form the axial skeleton today or at least talk about the what forms at the very the very primordial axial skeleton and meninges uh, and a bunch of all the muscles of the trunk all right uh where were we so if if you guys are just jumping into this video, you're going to be completely lost. I suggest you go back to video number one. Uh, this is an embryology course, basically. This is exactly what I'm going to be teaching my students. Uh, and next week, actually, we're going to be starting. So you need to start at the beginning. You're going to be lost. <clears throat> Based on the last video, here's where we, uh, what we've built so far of the little tiny human. Uh, this is a view from cranial to caudal. It's a technically a coronal view. And a long time ago, we talked about formation of the primitive streak, which you can't really see anymore in this picture. Uh, but we've got a nodal cord we created. A uh, neural plate is going to be folding into a neural tube in the near future. We caused, uh, we created the three, uh, the three layers, the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. Uh, but now in this video, we're going to be uh, talking more about this paraxial mesoderm right here. In the last video, we talked about how the lateral plate mesoderm developed a cavity called the intraembryonic coelom that worked its way out and actually communicated with the extraembryonic coelom or the chorionic cavity. When folding occurs, we're going to lose this, but we haven't talked about folding yet. Uh, therefore, we created two new layers. Uh, we created this layer, which is, this is all lateral plate mesoderm. We created the splanchnic lateral plate mesoderm and the somatic lateral plate mesoderm. There's a whole bunch of AKs for that. Uh, but <clears throat> that tissue, uh, when in combination with the ectoderm above, if you take both of these tissues, that's given the name somatopleur. If you take the splanchnic lateral plate mesoderm and combine it with the endoderm, you get what's called a splanchnopleur. We'll talk about these more when we talk about folding. And so that's pretty much uh, where we are. If you don't know these structures, you have to memorize these. You've got to know uh, the parts of this, of this folding embryo. All right. So we're going to talk about somatogenesis here, uh, seg which is segmentation of the paraxial mesoderm into epithelial blocks. Uh, that's where we're going. We're going to first talk about uh, somatomeres and somites. Well, there's two. Uh, we'll talk about this in a second. But somatome somatomeres are relatively new. In fact, only two of the authors, one of, of whom is a board book for chiropractors, so it could be on the board. So mitomere is a relatively new discovery. Uh, somites have been around for a long time. They're easily seen with a microscope, as we'll see. So recall that during mesendermal differentiation, mesenchymal uh, tissue of the mesoderm, remember mesoderm is not an epithelium, it's a mesenchymal tissue which can go into anything. Uh, this clumped into three regions, the paraxial, intermediate, and lateral plate mesoderm. Uh, we've already covered that. In fact, we've taken lateral plate mesoderm and actually split it, which is kind of the end stage of formation of lateral plate mesoderm. All right, so that's where, where we were. Uh, next segmentation will occur. Super important uh, process of embryogenesis, and it involves clumping of the paraxial mesoderm into blocks uh, with space between them. Uh, and these structures are called somatomeres in the cranial region, uh, somites in the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, coccyx region. So let's talk this through. The first things to appear are the somatomeres. And these appear about day 19 in the cranial paraxial mesoderm. Uh, it, clumping occurs up here in this mesenchymal tissue. 
and you get your somatophores. They appear sequentially. So this shows all somatics and somatophores formed, or up to somatomere 5. There's 43 of these things eventually will form. But the very first one will form all by itself here. Then the next one forms. Then the next one. Next one. Next one. You get the idea. Uh, and then after the somatomeres are done, the first somite forms. So this is a sequential kind of time process uh, that occurs. So somatophores, somatomeres are born first up in the cranial region. Okay, everything we said, I think, uh, clumping process is called segmentation. Langman, who keeps going out on tangents and going using terms no other author uses, calls this epithelialization. I don't know why he does that. Uh, he should stick with what the research is calling things because it just makes it more confusing. But nevertheless, Langman's A Board of Chiropractic Examiner's book. And remember, I explained that in the last video, the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. So you have to take your boards to uh, graduate. There's four of them. And the Board of Chiropractic Examiners have a list of books. And all the questions come from those books specifically. And so Langman is one of those books. And if he says epithelialization, it could well show up. Not sure what books the medical students use, but <clears throat> it's the same kind of principle. Okay, so almost immediately after the first pair of somatomeres forms, uh, we get another pair, pair two form, immediately caudally to those. And it happens again, as we said, and eventually you'll get seven somatomeres. Segmentation also involves converting the mesenchymal mesoderm cells back into an epithelial tissue. So this is kind of weird. Remember, it started out as epithelial uh, epiblast cells. It was converted to a mesenchymal type uh, cell that went through the primitive streak, a bottle cell. Uh, and now we're going to convert it back into an epithelial tissue. That already occurred in the endoderm. So this is kind of nothing new. Uh, so this is another example of what's called mesenchymal to epithelial conversion. Now there's some controversy here. I don't know if it's controversy. It's just slow learning on the part, of the, the part of a lot of other books, including Larson, which I like a lot. Uh, so Carlson and Langman are the only two books that mention somatomeres. The other ones don't. Traditionally, it's been stated that there's no paraxial mesoderm segmentation in the cranial region. But with more powerful microscopes, electron microscopes, we can clearly see that's not true. So future research demonstrates. In fact, there is a subtle, it's not as thick as somite segmentation, but it's definitely there, and uh, the other books need to catch up. But right now, Carlson and Langman are the only two of the major authors, including Singh, uh, Moore, Singh, Larson. Uh, they don't use the word, so they need to catch up. So after we get the seven pairs of somites formed, we finally get the first, I'm sorry, the seven pairs of somatomeres formed, we finally get the first somite to be formed. And that occurs about day 20 and it occurs the first region after this is the occipital region uh, and this would be I'm sorry this is the cranial region so metomeres form in the cranial region good test question where do somatomeres form cranial region uh, then we get the next region down is the occipital region and that's where we get the first pair of somites formed uh, <coughs> okay and again, it forms caudally to the last pair of somatomeres. We said that already. Uh, very strongly segmented. So mites can be seen with a good microscope. You don't need an electron microscope to see them. They've been around forever. To see so mites, you need an electron microscope. A sequential, I kind of told you this already. Uh, when we talk about the brain, a, a lot of these segmentations occur all at once. But that's not the case with these somites or somatomeres. Uh, they occur like slicing bread. You make one, you make another, make another. The loaf of bread would be the paraxial mesoderm, and we're slicing these into the somites. And remember, this is occurring bilaterally. Now, there's another pair. Another loaf would be right over here because there's two sections of, of paraxial mesoderm on each side of the midline. Okay, this zone right here that's about ready to form, that's called the presomitic zone or presomitic area. There's some new genes that are going to be turned on in this region we'll talk about in a minute, so that's another important concept. 
these are very sequentially developed. In fact, about three new pairs of somites are formed uh, every day, about every 24 hours. So uh, they, that's the definition of sequentially. Here's a nice drawing. This is a real human uh, embryo being formed. And you can clearly see the neural pores of the neural tubes are still open. This is a view from the dorsal of the dorsal surface. And you can see the somites have formed quite nicely. They're visible. So metomeres would be up in here. We can't really see those. Uh, we need a higher powered uh, microscope or electron microscope to see these. But you can clearly see the somites on each side uh, of the neural tube would be here. Neural tube is deep though, right? Neural tube is down here. But some of the this kind of the uh, neural platish type tissue that forms between them. And then we have this exactly the same picture of a cartoon. Presomitic zone would be right here. So the next four, next pair of somites would be forming right here. Again, this is a dorsal to ventral view of the little embryo. Okay, so what are the results of the segmentation? By the end of the week five, so this goes way on. We're only talking about week three and four stuff still. Uh, by week five, at the end of the process, you're going to get about 43. It's 42 to 44 is the range, but on average, about 43 somites form. And some of these somites actually f disappear after formation, especially down in the coccygeal region. Uh, so <clears throat> Langman says that one of the occipital somites uh, also disappear. That wasn't confirmed by the other authors, but... Now the bottom line is the final number of somites you're left with is about 38 pairs, anywhere from 37 to 39 pairs, but we'll just use 38 to keep things simple for testing purposes, right? I'm not a big one with numbers, but that's a good number to remember. Folding, we haven't talked about folding yet, but <clears throat> as folding continues, you can see how the little embryo is starting to look like a little human now with an eye and the arm buds or the extremity buds have started to form an arm here, uh, but all the somites uh, are fo are most of the somites are forming as the uh, embryo is folding, which we'll talk about in upcoming videos. Probably the next video actually. Uh, what's the regional count of these things? So you got seven pairs of somatomeres in the cranial region, four pairs of somites in the occipital region, eight pairs in the cervical re region. 12 pairs in the thoracic region. Somewhere you're going, hey, that matches the, the nerve roots, spinal nerves, and it does match the spinal nerve numbers, except the occipital region. And, you know, this is different up here, but there are eight cervical spinal nerves and 12 thoracic nerves and five lumbar spinal nerves, etc. Five sacral nerves, that's true as well. Uh, eight to 10 pairs of somites form in the coccygeal region. That drops down to uh, three or four in the future though. Now this is complex. There's our little nerd alert warning. <clears throat> so how do you build a somite? I think it's important to understand. I mean researchers spend their lives working on this stuff so we should talk about it. So first recall that caudal intraembryonic mesodermal cells they're naturally producing fibroblast growth factor FGF8 and went. Those genes are turned on and they're cranking out these gene products. Among other things, FGF8 uh, makes the uh, makes the cell elongate, makes the mesoderm elongate, but another thing FG8, FGF8 and went do, they inhibit the formation of somites. So somites cannot grow in the caudal portion of the mesoderm because of this. So that's really important. So if you want to make a somite Obviously, the first thing you have to do is you've got to shut off these genes. FGF8 and WENT genes must be turned off. And then the question is, well, well, how do you do that? Here's a side note I just said about FGF8. It's really important in making the mesoderm uh, extend kind of longitudinally. Uh, and it does that by mitosis. The meso mesenchymal mesodermal cells are splitting and it grows longer and it helps the embryo to fold as well. Um, so that's just a side note that's important. All right, so <clears throat> what's the deal? How do you turn off FGF8? Well, here's the story. The last pair of somites, so the very last pair, let's say pair eight or whatever, those newly formed somites, they have new genes turned on. 
and those genes uh, release retinoic acid. So the retinoic acid genes are turned on, they're transcribed, the transcript goes to a ribosome, and retinoic acid is created and released from the cell. The retinoic acid then soaks in because they're right next to the, the presomatic tissue. The next somite to form is right next to it. Retinoic acid soaks into that tissue, turns off uh, what we need to turn off, FGF8 and WET. Because you remember, we can't, if these are on, you can't build a somite. This has to be off. So uh, bottom line, retinoic acid is the thing that turns off FGF8 and WET. So that gives it the green light. You can build a somite, but there's more to it. So according to this, now this is complex, the wavefront model. I'm not going to get too much, but wavefront model uh, basically says that there's a gradient in the mesoderm uh, where FGF8 and WENT are more caudal uh, and retinoic acid is produced by somatic cells. Uh, so you have a gradient that's ever shrinking. And again, only cells exposed to high levels of retinoic acid uh, can undergo somatogenesis. Good with that? It's pretty simple. Here's the wavefront model. So here's that picture of the developing somites here. Maybe there's some more up here. I guess these are just two. The presomatic zone, these are going to become the next somites. And we have a gradient. Up here, these are already secreting retinoic acid. So we have a lot of retinoic acid floating around in the interstitium here, floating around. Uh, down here, FGF8 and wet rule. Uh, so these are very high levels floating around here in the environment. Uh, these cells are releasing that and the cells, the notochord and the cell, the, the ectoderm. And so somites can't form here, but it's right here. These cells are the ones that are uh, secreting retinoic acid. Uh, and these cells are absorbing the retinoic acid and therefore they're able to turn into somatic tissue or turn into somites next. So that's the wavefront model, how this this wave of retinoic acid is kind of sweeping toward the caudal region here. Very good with that. So uh, now that FGF8 and WENT are turned off, we, we're not done yet. We need to turn on the notch gene in the presomatic tissue. So the notch gene uh, is turned on in the tissue that's going to become a somite. It also turns on the mesbit 2, but we don't know a lot about that story, so I'm not going to go down that pathway. Uh, but uh, what do the notch gene products do then? So now we got notch turned on in the presomitic tissue, the tissue that's going to be, come, be turning into a somite. What does that notch gene product do? It turns on two more genes uh, called lunatic fringe and the hairy gene. Or C hairy gene, uh, and therefore these are both strong or powerful transcription factors. And lunatic fringe and C hairy have are really what transforms uh, that tissue into a somite, causes further development. We're still not done with the story, but these are uh, two important genes that are turned on by Notch. Okay, and at this point you can actually see the somite uh, is visible. It's still not mature, but it's visible. Uh, we got some other things to do. You have to form a barrier between the new somite and the one that was just formed. Uh, and we need to talk about F and B here. So we don't want the somites blending into one another or sticking together. So we need to partition them apart. We need individual blocks. Uh, and how you separate these somites is that the previously formed somite secretes a, a ligand called F and B. What's a ligand? That's like a hormone or a molecule that has an effect on another. Hormone's a good example of a ligand. Um, yep, so it secretes Ephraim B. So that means if this is a ligand, it's going to bind with something. And it does. So this ligand binds uh, to receptors, specifically Ephraim A receptors, that are have popped up, have been expressed in the newly completed the almost completed somite and these two bind together and that prevents any sticking to occur uh, once Ephraim B is bound to the new somite there there's no morphine in fact it uh, creates a visible fissure between them called the intersomitic space so Ephraim B is important for keeping them to sticking together and putting some distance between them and making this intersomitic space 
So one more gene, the WENT6 gene product is also expressed in the ectoderm. It soaks into our new somite, which is almost ready. WENT6 turns on another gene called the paraxis gene. Uh, it also turns off the snail gene, and that's pretty much all we need to do to finish our somite. So with WENT on, snail off, paraxis gene product ultimately causes the final conversion of these this new somite which is mesenchymal tissue a mature somite has to be epithelial tissue so uh, yep paraxis gene does that for us it ultimately causes the conversion of mesenchymal tissue into epithelial so that's called mesenchymal to epithelial transmission who does that who causes mesothelial to epithelial transmission or transformation that would be the paraxis gene product Okay, now officially a somite is born. There's some other things. Paraxis is an important gene or important gene product. It also makes a bunch of extracellular matrix proteins, including fibronectin, uh, and uh, cell adhesion molecules like n cadherin are produced by this as well. I'm not going to go down those paths. So, Okay, <clears throat> so now that we've built the somite, this is going to undergo differentiation as well. So we're going to get a whole bunch of different regions formed within the somite, which is super important. We're finally going to get to some making of some stuff here. So the first thing that happens is each somite cell undergoes an anterior and posterior division. This is not a visible division. You can't see this. This is a biochemical division. Um, and we're not going to go too crazy into it, but each somite undergoes internal division, splits into an anterior and posterior. Uh, so there's different genes turned on in these regions. That's not a physical split that you can see. I'm not even going to go into the genes, but uh, basically the cells in each half will do different type of programming and create different types of tissues, such as forming. We'll talk about this more when we talk about forming vertebrae, uh, the migration of the neural crest cells. We'll probably I don't think we've talked about those. We'll probably do that in the next video. And then uh, axons and little nerves are starting to grow now. And so this is important in migrating these, uh, making the nerves grow in the right directions. All right. So we formed a somite and now we need to split it up into regions. First thing that happens is you get these little cavities that are formed. Uh, these, or the first thing that happens is you get a cavity in the center of the somite and new epithelial cells that are present in the center. Uh, genes turn on, we won't get into the which genes, but genes turn on in these center cells and they actually align themselves in a circle to form a little a cavity. And so the cells are called somatoseal cells, and the somatoseal cells, which are super important in making the disc, these will, these will ultimately morph into the intervertebral disc, and the actual articular surface of the zygopothesis joints, two super important structures, are from these little somatoseal cells. Uh, but the hole that forms at their apices, this hole is called simply the uh, somatoseal. So somatoseal cells form the somatoseal. Remember, seal, that means cavity. Uh, later, this tissue will become mesenchymal. Right now, it's all epithelial, but it'll turn into mesenchymal tissue. It'll migrate medially, and some authors give it a new name, like Carlson calls this the arthrotome. Other authors just call keep calling them somatoseal cells. Uh, so I like the idea of arthrotome, which we'll get to in a minute. But we'll, we'll see that more in a minute. So here they are. Our, we actually got a little folding going in this view. Uh, but here's our, here's our neural tube is completed now. That might be a little premature. I think the neural tube is probably still folding. But neural tube, nodal cord is here. This is the secondary yolk sac, endoderm, ectoderm. And these this would be intermediate mesoderm lateral plate mesoderm and this is our paraxial mesoderm that's already formed into a somite and so this somite has already developed uh, some cell differentiation in the middle we have somatoseal cells that have formed a ring and at the apices we actually get a little hollowing here within the somite and that's called the somatoseal okay uh, what do they form in general so, uh, somites? Uh, this is kind of out of place, isn't it? The cell, the slide. 
I just threw it in here just to kind of wet our, I should have put this up further, but in general, the somite, the different divisions we're going to talk about, they form the axial skeleton, the muscles uh, around the axial skeleton, the back muscles, the intrinsic muscles of the back, uh, the dermis, the dura, all three layers of dermis, uh, uh, dura, and um, not just dura, all three layers, the uh, arachnoid, the pia matter, I believe all three layers are formed, and the blood vessels. So uh, for you new students, remember this is first quarter stuff, which I still think they should be in second or third quarter. Uh, but the everything in blue is the axial skeleton. One basic thing that all anatomy students, they have to know the difference between the axial skeleton uh, and the appendicular skeleton. So the axial skeleton is the skull, the spine, the ribs, uh, the sacrum, the coccyx. The appendicular skeleton, I always think of extremities, but it also includes the coxal bones here of the pelvis, the, the scapula, uh, the clavicles, which you can just see sneaking through there. So make sure you know the difference. You'll need that for your gross anatomy. But let's get specific and see what's really made. The first thing we should talk about is the first thing, really the second, because the somato seal uh, formed, but the first big division of the somite is it morphs into a sclerotome. So we need to talk about this sclerotome. So the newly formed somite is immediately stimulated by a bunch of signaling molecules. Cells of the nodal cord and neural tube are kicking out sonic hedgehog gene products and uh, noggin. These are the two big ones. They soak into the ventral medial portion of the somite, just the half. So half of the somite is affected by these uh, sonic hedgehog and nod nodal. Uh, and that turns on, wakes up two genes inside this ventral medial tissue. Uh, not the dorsolateral tissue, just the ventral medial tissue. Uh, so paraxis 1 and parax, I'm sorry, parax 1, or not parax, pax 1, PAX1, and pax 9 are both turned on in the ventral medial region. Okay, so what? Who cares about that? Well, they make gene products. And the gene products, it's complicated, but we'll just say it, it converts the epithelial tissue. Remember, the somite is epithelial. It converts it back into mesenchymal tissue. Uh, so that's pretty amazing. So we've went from, and we've said that before, we've gotten back into a mesenchymal tissue. Um... That's not true. That should that statement shouldn't be there yet. That's gonna it's gonna convert back into epithelial tissue later. But forget that statement. Uh, this region, the somite, is now considered a secondary mesenchymal tissue, right? Because it was mesenchymal to begin. The paraxial mesoderm is a mesenchymal tissue. It was converted into an epithelial tissue. And now PAX1 and PAX2 gene products turns it back into a mesenchymal. So we went from a mesenchymal tissue to epithelial tissue, and now it's morphed back into a mesenchymal tissue. It's crazy. And But that's what happens. So everything I just said right there. And specifically, in order to do that, we have to, we talked about this in other videos, but we have to lose the the connections. Epithelial tissues are held very strongly together. So we had to lose those connections. Uh, so we lose the cams. Uh, NCAD here and gets turned off, so no no junctional complexes occur. The basal lamina gets dissolved. These basically become mobile, movable. They have little pseudopodia. They can swim. Uh, and that's what happens. <clears throat> and those are now called sclerotome cells. We've almost created the sclerotome. So now these new cells, they migrate ventrolaterally even further and clump together. And that's called the sclerotome. So this is all the epithelial tissue of the somite. There's a somatoceal. That's uh, still epithelial tissue at this point. Uh, but because of PAX1 and PAX9, we have morphed back into these weird little mesenchymal cells. And this is the dorsal region up here. This is ventral. This is that same picture we've been looking at. So this is the ventral medial region. Here's the midline right the nodal cord is right here the nodal cord and the neural tube are in the midline in the center f of the growing embryo and so this is a ventral medial region of the somite is gone 
uh, it's turned into these mesenchymal cells and these are going to mul keep multiplying here as we'll see in a second now we have the sclerotome division of the somite okay we're not done though but this is epithelial tissue that's going to change in a minute but this is sclerotome this is mesenchymal tissue a lot of stuff these are super super important cells probably the most important cells that we've talked about well they're i mean that's arguable the neural plate and neural tube is important everything's important okay so what uh, what do they do in general these sclerotome cells well new genes are activated within the sclerotome cells that cause them to produce cartilaginous stuff uh, like chondroitin sulfate proteoglycans things you need to make bone and make a disc uh, so that's exactly what they do they make the uh, basically vertebrae as we'll see in a, a minute though they go on to build the vertebrae uh, and the ribs and the disc and we'll see what they do so remember in the last video I said what do what do embryology professors test on they test on what uh, what embryologic structure gives rise to what structure that you're going to study for the rest of your four years and so that's important so in this case vertebrae and ribs and we're going to have a more complete list in a minute okay the somite story differentiation story is not over uh, so we made a sclerotome with the kind of lower inner half of the somite with the upper outer half of the somite we're going to make a structure called the dermomyotome all right, so let's talk about that. The dorsal lateral half of the somite is now stimulated by gene products from the Went gene. And these are secreted from the neural tube and ectoderm. Uh, Went gene products turn on PAX3, PAX7, and Paraxis genes. But this is weird. They do I have a picture of this. They only turn on these genes at the ends of the uh, what's going to become the derm, uh, dermal myotome. The middle is not touched. That remains epithelial tissue. So went gene products, we said what it turns on, but only at the ends. So that would be the dorsal lateral, uh, or what we said, the ends of the dorsal lateral half of the somatic cells. The gene products create another transformation, endothelial to mesenchymal transformation uh, at these ends. Okay, so now we go back into mesenchymal. That would also be a secondary mesodermal tissue. Uh, the new structure that is created now uh, with mesenchymal cells at both ends and epithelial cells in the middle, that is called the dermomyotome. So this whole structure, not this, these are somatic cells, uh, this whole structure is the dermomyotome. So we've just split our somite into two structures, a sclerotome, uh, more medial and more ventrally, and a dermomyotome more ventral or more dorsally more laterally okay so that's our somite somite's gone it's split into these these are mesenchymal sclerotomes mesenchymal uh, and these cells on the outer portion which are going to become myotome in a minute uh, but uh, this one is kind of weird because it's half mesenchymal cells and half epithelial these are still epithelial cells in the middle Let's finish the story. So now the dermomyotome is going to split into two pieces. And this is confusing. Authors are not very good about explaining how this happens. So we got a two-zoned uh, somatic uh, somite structure. It's going to become three-zoned right now. So the mesenchymal cells at the ends of the dermomyotome, they're mesenchymal cells. They have pseudopodia. They can swim. So they migrate underneath they're going to slip right down in this layer and push these cells up is what's going to happen. They move beneath the epithelial cells and now we got two layers. <clears throat> the two layers are called the myotome. That's where these my mes mesenchymal cells swim to. And the epithelial cells get, get pushed to the top. Those are going to be called the dermatome. And that's exactly what happens. So we got the cells migrating to the middle. These are going to become the myotome cells make up the myotome layer these cells are dividing getting a little thicker they're being pushed up that's going to become the dermatome everybody good with that there's our there's our somite so we've created we've taken our epithelial somite and split it into three layers a dermatome on the top which is still epithelium i mean technically this is toward the top i mean the dorsal lateral region 
uh, in the center third is made up of mesenchymal cells called myotomes. Myo, what do you think these are going to turn into? Myo means muscle. These are going to turn into muscles. And then we have our sclerotomes right here. Uh, these are going to turn into, we'll see exactly what they're going to turn into, but basically ribs and the vertebrae. Okay, everybody good with that? And then what happened to our donut in the middle? Those cells have migrated, those somatocell cell cells, they've migrated right over here next to the neural tube. They're hanging out, uh, waiting to help make the, uh, the disc, part of the disc, and the articular surfaces of the facet joints. <clears throat> so dermatone. Now, I should have put a star here. Here's what professors like to test them. What does the dermatone give rise to? And I like Carlson's more in-depth book, so, uh, but you should look at your own medical students, look at your own text to see uh, what that author is saying, because these authors are all, all over the place. Most of them are pretty close with regard to this stuff, though. Anyway, so traditionally the dermatome gives rise uh, to the dermis, right? Part of the skin. That's the second layer of the skin. Remember the skin? Well, not your first quarter students. The skin has an epidermis on the top. That's the one that you can you rub your hands together. You're rubbing your epidermises. The second layer underneath that, a little deeper, where the blood vessels are, that's the dermis. So all the dermis is created uh, by the dermatome. This guy right here, which makes sense. It's kind of on the outside. So that gives rise to the dermis. Uh, there's a bunch of axial connective tissue that it gives rise to as well, like uh, costal cartilage of the ribs, things like that. Um, so traditionally, all the books say that. There's some new research. Carlson is a more modern book. Uh, so the central region of the dermatone uh, gives rise to two different things. Some skeletal muscles, which wasn't known before. You think dermatone, you think skin and connective tissue. But there are some skeletal muscles we'll talk about later and something called brown fat. Uh, so it's not as pure as we once believed. Okay. Uh, what about those? Let's take care of those somatocell cells that migrated over here. Uh, as we said, those took on mesenchymal chymal characteristics they became mesenchymal and they migrated over here and this region Carlson calls this the arthrotome uh, the other books uh, don't call it that they just call this somatocell cells so I'm not sure how that will show up on your boards uh, but I like arthrotome I like the idea uh, I guess we'll see what it give rise to in a little bit what well, I already told you a couple times disc and the articular surfaces of the facets. Okay, so what do the so, what does the so uh, somite derivatives give rise to? So what do all these three layers of the somite? What do they give rise to officially? <clears throat> so let's go through according to Carlson now. So the ventral region of the somite gives rise to the vertebral bodies and the vertebral discs. Super important for especially chiropractors. So, but still, I mean, if the board question, you got to think how deep is the question going to be, because you could say paraxial mesoderm gives rise to all of these structures, because paraxial mesoderm morphs into somites. You could say more somites give rise to vertebral bodies. Paraxial mesoderm gives rise to vertebral bodies. Uh, more specifically, sclerotome gives rise to vertebral bodies. Even more specifically, the ventral region of the sclerotome is what really gives rise to vertebral bodies and discs. You see how that works? So you kind of got to use common sense when you're looking at your professor's questions because you don't know how deep they're going to go and you don't know how deep boards are going to go. I would guess that I don't think boards will probably say the ventral region of the somite <coughs> forms wet vertebral bodies, I think they're probably going to say the sclerotome forms what, and then you got all this stuff that the sclerotome, uh, but you never know, the boards seem to be getting uh, tougher, and so maybe they will break this into regions. For my class, I'm going to have you know these regions, so ventral regions of the sclerotome, and remember, what's the sclerotome? That's just this region, that's that kind of inner region of the uh, somite, which morphed into the sclerotome, that's what we're talking about. So sclerotome the ventral region gives rise to vertebral bodies and discs 
And we'll talk about that when we talk about forming vertebral bodies. Two somites are actually involved in forming one vertebral body. The dorsal region is involved in forming the spinous process and lamina of the, ver the vertebrae. Again, first quarter students, you're going to be getting spinal anatomy at the same time. I'm also teaching that this quarter too, so at least I'll be able to keep all this stuff uh, together. Uh, but th these are pieces of the vertebrae. Uh, the lateral region, some authors actually call this lateral region uh, the syndetome, and this gives rise to the distal portion of the ribs and some tendons for the intrinsic back muscles. What are the intrinsic back muscles? They're all the back muscles. They're the erector spinae, the I love spaghetti muscles, iliocostalis muscles, the longissimus muscles, the spinalis muscles, the intertransversaris muscles. What aren't the intrinsic back muscles? The trapezius latissimus dorsi are not members, the rhomboids. They're back muscles, but they, they're different origin. We'll talk about them when the time comes. Okay, uh, The medial region is also, Carlson gives that another name because there's a, some cell transformation uh, called uh, uh, meningiotomes. And those give rise, that's a good name, because that gives rise to the meninges, the dura, arachnoid, pia mater, and the blood vessels that supply those meninges. The very central region of the sclerotome gives rise to the articular pillars. So those are the superior and inferior articular processes, including the pars interarticularis, uh, pedicles, transverse process, and the proximal ribs. Uh, so mostly the vertebral body is formed here. The vertebrae, it's, I'm sorry, the, ver the vertebrae itself is formed here. But also the meninges are formed by this medial region. Everybody good with that? What about the myotome? <clears throat> so myotome, let's go back. What are we talking about? There's the, uh, where's the myotome? I had three regions. There we go. There's the myotome right here so we just finished the sclerotome what do these guys what do these cells morph into the myotome cells so they the dorsal medial region of the myotome that forms myo means muscle all the intrinsic back muscles we just talked about and it helps form some of the extensor muscles of the limbs uh, like the triceps it causes extension of the elbow okay uh, the ventral medial region so the other half gives rise to the muscles of the ventral lateral body wall. So that's all your, your abdominal region. That's all your flat muscles uh, on the side. The flat muscles are, of course, the external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis muscle, uh, probably the transversalis fascia as well. Not sure about that one, but we'll get to that when the time comes. Uh, and the flexor muscles of the limbs. So uh, what's the if the extensor muscle is a tricep, who opposes the action of extension of the elbow? Flexion of the elbow, that's done by the bicep. So, my, so you can see these are some really important regions here. <clears throat> arthrotome. Arthrotome was right over here. Or wait. Oh, we didn't say what the arthrotome is yet, did we? Um, was that arthrotome? Did I get the wrong word there? No, that is called arthrotome. Okay, so there's the arthrotome. Had a mind uh, fart there. Um, so somatic cells or arthrotome. Okay, we already said what they give rise to. The intervertebral discs, they help form the discs. Them, uh, and the vertebral joint surfaces. So not the sclerotome gives rise to the articular pillar, articular process, superior and inferior articular processes. But the actual cartilaginous surface that makes up the the zygapothecial joint, or the so-called facet, that's created by the arthrotome cells themselves and the proximal ribs. What about the dermatone? Remember that? That's the third layer. We'll zip back there. There's the dermatone. These are the only ones that are not mesenchymal. These are all mesenchymal cells except for these. Those guys are still epithelial cells. So what do they give rise to? They're going to give rise to the dermis of the skin. Uh, where I already told you that's underneath the epidermis. They also give rise to uh, a lot of the scapula. Uh, not the spine of the scapula, though. 
um, or not the coracoid process of the scapula, but just the scapula in general it gives right to. The Carlson's probably not the greatest anatomist in the world, just calls it the blade. That's not a word, the blade of the scapula. All right, <clears throat> final divisions of the somite. So authors are all over the place here. Carlson's the most thorough. Uh, I like it, though. There's a couple other. We kind of talked about these all let, um, a little bit already. Uh, this uh, syndotome or syndetome. This is the lateral portion of the sclerotome, just medial to the myotome. FGF induces these myotome cells to morph into the specific tissue. And then there's a meningiotome, which is really the, some authors just call it the medial portion of the sclerotome. We already talked about this. Uh, some authors, like Carlson, breaks this into a specific tissue because there's different genes turned on here. Uh, and that's going to give rise to the meninges. That's the meningiotome. So here is a picture from Carlson. Great book. I really think you you got to own this book if you're really going to become really good in embryology. Um, here's the meningiotome right here. So this whole big thing, this is all sclerotome tissue. Some people include this uh, syndotome here, uh, but so the medial portion of it is new genes are turned on here. So this is called the myotome region. But again, a lot of authors just call this the medial portion uh, of the sclerotome. So, um, and it's really should be the dorsal medial portion because here's another medial portion. Uh, this is more. Uh, ventral medial portion so that's called the ventral sclerotome they call it. it surrounds more the nodal cord but you get the idea the ones we're talking about though the new ones I just introduced are the meningiotome here and then the uh, syndotome is right just medial to the myotome and we can see the shape has really changed right that's because folding lateral folding is going on at the same time which we still need to talk about everybody good with that so this is an important video. Uh, <clears throat> meningiotomes uh, and the syndotome, we already said what they give rise to. Syndotome gives rise to the tendons uh, of the intrinsic uh, back muscles. So all those muscles have to have tendons. The meningiotomes, we've already said, they give rise to the meninges, the dura and arachnoid and pia mater. And, okay. and I believe the blood vessels that go to those as well. Heaven another slide and those back a little further we just went over so in general the somite in general uh, what can it produce uh, blood vessels I'm not going to go crazy on this but almost all somatic tissue can has the ability to generate blood vessels from scratch and there's two different ways blood vessels can be formed we'll go over into that probably when we talk about the heart more uh, but without worrying about specific regions somite cells can all morph into other types of cells, not just blood vessel cells. Let's look at all the different cell types, which first quarter students have histology as well, medical students too. Uh, these are the cell types that all the somatic tissue can morph into. Fat cells, adipocytes, uh, ca cartilage, chondrocytes. If you want to make cartilage, you first you can do that by morphing into somite cell has to morph into a chondrocyte cell. If you want to form bone, you have to morph into a cell that makes bone, and that would be an osteocyte. Then there's epithelial cells of vessels. If you want to make a blood vessel, you have to morph into epithelial cells that are prone to make vessels. Uh, pericytes are parts around some of the microcirculation. Well, they are also angiogenesis involved in that. Fibroblasts uh, lay down connective tissue. They make up the uh, matrix that lives in between cells. They also make up scar tissue, which can become pathological. Uh, if you want to make muscle, you have to morph into a myocyte. If you want to make nervous cell, glial cells or whatever, you have to morph into the different cells of the nervous system. So bottom line, somite region, super, super important. When I say somite, I'm being very general, right? Because we know there's really no somitic cells or somite cells. That we can be more specific. We have sclerotome myotome, dermatome. Those are the three big divisions of the somite. All right, so that was an important video. Make sure there's a lot of stuff to memorize on that video. We will see you in the next video.